Tervetuloa taas kuningaskunnan tuuliohjelmasarjan pariin. Tässä jaksossa olemme Natanian lähellä Bathenin kylässä ja vierailemme kristityn perheen luona, joka on tehnyt alian Israeliin. Harold ja Tani Van Ouokerkin perhe muutti Israeliin seitsemän vuotta sitten Hollannista. He ovat saaneet Israelissa aseman, joka yleensä myönnetään vain juutalaisille paluumuuttajille. You cannot make Aliyah if you are a Christian and not born Jewish. So this is one of the core values of the state of Israel. It's like a safe home for the Jewish people. This was already designed in the Balfour Declaration. This is repeated by David Ben Gurion that Israel should be a country for the Jewish Jewish people to live Jewish according to their laws, according to their ways of living. The religion, so actually there is no place for immigrants that are not Jewish. Makes it completely legal, but we are friends of this nation, and they made an exception for us. Niille, jotka Jeesus haluaa asumaan Israeliin, hänellä on aina tie. And I believe um that we are the first in this kind of status um, that it will be possible also for other people to follow this way in end times as believer to live in the land to be a blessing to be like a pillar uh, spiritually but also physically Van Ouokerkin suku suojeli juutalaisia kodeissaan toisen maailmansodan aikana. Heille on siksi istutettu oma puu Jerusalemin keskitysleirimuseo Yad Vashemin alueelle kansojen vanhurskaiden puutarhaan. So I'm very grateful for my grandparents, for my mother's side, my grandfather and also my grandmother. They had a young girl in the house for three years from 42 till the end. And shortly after she went to Palestine, before that Israel was recognized. And from the brother of my grandmother, they had a couple in the house. Also all the years they had children. So they did have faith. They did have guts. And they did stand up. Myös sekä Haroldilla että Tanilla oli molemmilla lämmin suhde Israeliin jo ennen kuin he tapasivat toisensa. Ja koko avioliiton ajan Israel on ollut tärkeällä paikalla heidän elämässään. Van Ouokerkit olivat Hollannissa vakavaraisia yrittäjiä. Haave muutosta Israeliin lähti lopulta toteutumaan yllättäen, kun heidän firmalleen ilmaantui ostaja. In 2007, we got a letter from a company. They um, sell businesses. They make uh, combinations in uh, somebody who wants to buy another business or somebody who wants to sell. We had, we had no plans at that time to sell our business. But we got a letter from somebody that uh, the profile of our company was very interested to him. And um, Harold told me about it, and we thought about it if we want to do this and make Aliyah to Israel. Uh, it was in our head to do this for many years. Maybe, maybe it was in our head for 20 years, if there would be a possibility uh, that we would like to, uh, to move to Israel. So... Uh in Holland, we had a company in tail lifts. We were specialized in parts and repairs of that. We had about 17 employees in the end, in 2008. And like uh, Tani said, there was somebody who wanted to buy the company. It's a big decision, actually also of prayer. But we also know from biblical background that whoever bless Israel will be blessed. So the, uh, the only reason that we sold the company was to make it possible to do the immigration. Van Overkerkit myivät firmansa uskossa tietämättä ollenkaan, onnistuuko heidän asettumisensa Israeliin. 
He myivät firmansa syyskuussa 2008 päivänä, joka juutalaisessa kalenterissa sattui olemaan Rosh Hashanah, uuden vuoden päivä. Kaikki eivät kuitenkaan ymmärtäneet heidän päätöstään muuttaa Israeliin. Our church to be open, they thought we were crazy. They openly said so, and even went that far that they offered our children. If you want to let your parents go, something foolish, you can come with us. So the church was not so positive. Uh, our family was divided. Some understand it because we are many years so involved with Israel. Other or even uh, disconnected in the relation. And most of our friends did understand because we were many years talking so much about Israel. So it was almost a logical thing for many of the good friends who really understand us. Uh, you, you lose people, yes. But there are also uh, people that, uh, that stay in your life. My father, for instance, he, uh, I lost contact with him because he, uh, he is not, uh, not positive about the country. But my brother, he came with, with his wife every year. This is very nice. It's always, it's always important when you make a step like this um, to keep a very clear vision. So there is always in our life, there is like uh, like on the waves, we, we go like this, but we have to, uh, we have to keep a clear vision. Um, what is it about? What is what I want to do? What is, what is important? Perheen viidestä lapsesta neljä asui edelleen kotona, ja he tukivat yksimielisesti vanhempiensa päätöstä perheen muutosta Israeliin. Four children were with us, and... Uh, would move with us, so we spoke about it, and what was very important for us was uh, we all loved Israel, and we had the idea that it is good to, uh, to do something different, to make even a step what would look like a risk, because you, when you sell everything, you don't know what will come, um, you, have no, you have no guarantees. But we all agreed in this that it is better to make uh, a step to give something what you really want to do a try than to regret it afterwards. Because it was f actually for all of us very clear that uh, regret, when you have regret but you have money maybe, um, it cannot be paid by money, regret. You can, uh, you can never... Lähtöpäätöksen jälkeen alkoi valmistautuminen muuttoon. We started the process of uh, getting a visa for Harold to get a visa. Um, this was done by a lawyer. It's a process also, you don't know if it will happen, if they will agree. It is, uh, it is not complete certainty. Um, but this we, was one step we made with an Israeli lawyer. The other step was that we wanted to look for a house. Um, so I looked up for a, a broker in Israel. And um, in prayer, we all said, we all gave a list to the Lord uh, what would be important for us. For me, it was important to uh, that the house would have uh, a special uh, number, that the street will have a special name, or that you can have a, a recognition uh, somehow of the Lord, that I would recognize that it is a good place. Uh, the, for one of the children, for our son David, it was important to have close by a McDonald's or a Burger King. Um, so uh, first when we got here, when Harold was here before and then after I, I came also uh, to see the house and the, the street, it was called Bitan Aaron 28. We have a good friend, he's a, a rabbi. And we asked him, number 28, is it something special? 
in Torah, but it has not, no meaning. So I was a little bit disappointed and I thought, well, this cannot be the place. Um, we went another time to, to look at the place and when we left, the owner of the house uh, said, and we were, we were kind of serious about the place, but uh, there were some doubts. And when we left, he said, um, I just got a letter that they um, changed the number of the street and they gave it actually a new name. This street was called then Rimon Chaloche, and Rimon is uh, pomegranate. It is a fruit of fertility in the Bible. And well, number three is, uh, is a good number, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And uh, the place was no longer called Bitan Aaron, it was called Batgen. Um, Batgen is uh, daughter of Grace, daughter of uh, Naim, um, something, uh, yeah, nice. This has a, a very nice meaning. And he told that there would come um, a shopping center, a little shopping center, very close to our house and they would build also a McDonald's. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And all these, all these things, uh, little things, but big things for every one of us were sold. Yes, God was very faithful. Van Ourkerkin perhe muutti Israelin kesällä 2009. Aluksi eläminen Israelissa järjestyi työviisumin kautta. So the first six years we did it through the business. We showed that we are serious people by working, doing ex export, import. We export wines and we import tailift parts. These parts uh, used for Israeli tailifts. So we give good quality, a higher um, level of safety because this is what I did all my life. We had the idea when we moved here, we had the idea that it will be permanent. Uh, during, the, during the years, we found out this is not possible. When you go to Israel, you work for an embassy or it is only possible for three, four, maximum five years, what Harold said. During the process of the years, um, we had the vision to make a way for other people like us, for Gentiles, Gentiles from the nations, people that believe in the word of God, that the prophecies uh, will be fulfilled, and even in prayer that maybe you can pray for changes, you can pray for revival, um, so that there would be come possibility for other believers like us to come and live in Israel. We wanted to, we wanted to make a way, this was the vision. And it was not easy at all because we found out that there was a lot of um, blocks on the road they discussed a lot. It's not a small thing to allow Christian family to come in Israel for permanent. So they really discussed about it. So they uh, looked at our history, they looked at our present, what we are doing here, and it was very, very special that um, that was uh, an ultra-Orthodox who was in charge for the immigration, uh, Eli Yishai. And Eli Yishai is so far uh, to, the, to the Orthodox that Christianity is like an enemy. But we had a person who was in charge at the head of that and he became a personal friend with a black kippah. That means he was very serious Orthodox and still he, he loved us, we hugged us. And he even mentioned to colleagues that we are the soul of the nation. So this is a miracle of God itself that within Actually, what could be supposed as like somebody who would anti would be very pro, become a close friend of the heart. And that we became in contact with this man, another miracle. Our son David, after a few months living here, 
he was in a little cafe nearby, next to the McDonald's that my wife just spoke about. Through, let's see, only a few hundred meters from here. He met a girl, she was waitress, uh, Liat was her name, and she worked four years in the uh, government under Elisha, uh, this, this ultra-orthodox person. So first, I didn't believe, because David said, you have to contact her, she can help with our Todat uh, our visa. And later we did, and she helped, so she made the link, the contact with this other person. So actually our being here is from miracle to miracle, and the climax in the recognition was last year, last year in March. While we had a period of being non-legally anymore in the country, because there is now a law that after five years, if you are not Jewish, you, you should go. If you are working, if you are in the embassy, you, you should go. But they make an exception because also Tani and we, we are working here, Holocaust people, we are helping Holocaust people. And parents of us, my grandfather also, and the uncle of him, they helped Jewish people to survive in the Second World War. So all these things together made Gilad Erdan. He was in a certain short moment, in a time of changing of governments, he was the Ministry of Interior, and the Ministry of Interior, the minister, he can go over the laws, so they make a special arrangement. We get Aleph Chamesh, that's a four-year recognition as if we are Jewish or righteous of the nations. So the uh, exception that we could be here for, for always was done by the minister himself last year. So we have learned during the process to walk on water. And it was, uh, it was challenging. When, you, when we lived in Holland, when life is more easy, more settled, you can be a Christian, when I speak for myself, you can be a Christian, uh, you can uh, go to church, you can believe in God, um, and you can, use, you can use the Lord, but you can also work from yourself, from your own strength. We have found out that this is not possible in the land. You have to be uh, uh, sensitive to uh, the Lord, that you have to go in the flow of the Holy Spirit because when you don't, you're f you, f you slide and you slide very quickly and it's very difficult to climb up again. Um, so also I think maybe uh, in the last year, maybe when we were here five years from that we were here five years uh, and we found out that it would be very difficult maybe to stay permanent we gave back our dream, we gave it back to the Lord. Every morning we have uh, prayer time and intercession together. And from this time we gave it back to God, our dream, that whatever would happen, that it would be good. If we had to go back or if we would stay, we didn't want to, to press, to give any kind of pressure. This was how we felt it, so that God would be able to, to, to work, to work it out in whatever way. Ja Jumala antoi heille pysyvän sijan maassa. Elämä Israelissa ei kuitenkaan ole mikään turistimatka. Israel is a, is a land under pressure. There is a very big difference in atmosphere. When you come here, when I when I come when I arrive, I I uh, you you come home. You know I, I feel very welcome. I feel I feel home. But when you live here, um, the way people drive on the road, you always aware that this is a land under pressure. When there is a war situation or not, so this is what is what you feel in daily life. This is what you see on television. This is something that is going on every day. Uh, Israel is very expensive, very expensive country. 
insurance is difficult. Everything is, is, is not so easy here. Everything takes time. It's a new country. There's a lot of bureaucracy. By the past, the people are very much hurt. And this hurt you find back in everything. Um, the situation in where there was in Spain and Portugal, uh, every, every, uh, all the situation with the Jewish people, you, you find it back. So this is part of the daily life and this is what makes that everything takes much more time, the normal things of life, what you have to do, because um, they do not trust so easy. Uh, this is what you, what, what we are dealing with, what everybody, everybody is dealing with. In this country, when you come here, um, your character will be formed. You, if, if for the good or for the bad, there comes a squeezing, and you can go in the flow of the Holy Spirit, or you can rebel, and then it will, it will hurt you. These are all things we must. Uh, we must be aware of. So I encourage everybody who is determined to go to Israel, but make your calculation, make your prayers, and don't rely only on people outside, because they can give misinformation. They can use the pink glasses. Well, just try it. It can be fun, nice weather, nice people, good food. It's not that easy. On the other hand, there can be people who don't see it spiritually. They say, oh, it's expensive, it gives only troubles, why should you do that? There are so, in Africa, so many good places to do something good. So follow the Holy Spirit. Israelissa luottamus Israelin Jumalaan on saanut aivan uuden syvyyden. We learned that believing is uh, something, it is a, really a verb. It's not something that you read and it is yours. No, to really receive it, this is when I speak for myself, it is, uh, we had to learn. What are you doing when you find out that you are um, almost with no money? What are you doing? Do you keep on walking or do you start panicking? Uh, what are you doing when things go not so easy as you thought about when you have a dream that you want to go to a country you want to help and it is much more difficult than you find out what are you doing do you stay or do you go or do you panic or do you fight together there's a lot of choices we have we had to learn all in all the process and this is what God did, he gave us faith, you know, not every day we had the same faith, but sometimes I had more, sometimes Harold had more. And also the children, they had a lot of faith, they never complained, never, not a word. So in the process we could continue to walk. And like I said before, it is walking on water, and it still is. When you look down, when you look uh, to difficulties, it is, it is almost impossible. But when you look to the Lord um, to keep the vision that we want to be a blessing, uh, not only for ourselves, but for this nation, for God, for the Jewish people, to... Um, to be uh, sold against strongholds and it is very good to pray for Israel outside the country but it is also very good that Israel has strong believers in the country and it is something very natural also in biblical times when you read in, um, in the Old Testament there have always been um, Jewish people in the land, but also, also Gentiles. It's something, uh, it's something uh, normal. So I believe, with all my heart, that in end times like this, there will come 
more people like us. Muihin kansoihin kuuluvien tulo maahan on myös juutalaisille tärkeä merkki. We as believers, we know if we are here locally also praying and working in this nation, we are a true blessing. It is prophetical. It is a sign of the return of Yeshua, Jesus. And very interesting, six years ago, not long after that we came here, we met a rabbi, a very famous rabbi from Brooklyn, and he told to us that we are a proof that the Messiah is coming soon. Riippumatta siitä, mikä ihmiselle on mahdollista, Jumala tuo vielä tähän maahan kaikki ne, jotka hän on tänne tarkoittanut. Tämä on toistaiseksi viimeinen kuningaskunnan tuulisarjan jakso, sillä elokuussa, jos Herra suo, jatkamme Israelin vuoretsarjan parissa. Jumalan suunnitelman täyttymys myös Israelin vuorille lähestyy. Rukoillaan vielä yhdessä. Kiitos isä siitä, että kun sinä avaat, kukaan ei sulje. Kiitos siitä, että sinulla on ovi auki kaikille niille, jotka sinä haluat Israelin asumaan. Kiitos siitä, että Jeesuksen paluun aika on lähellä. Jeesuksen nimessä, aamen. Kuningaskunnan tuuliohjelmien tuotantoa voit myös tukea taloudellisesti. Se käy helposti soittamalla ruudussa näkyvään puhelinnumeroon 0600-100-77. Puhelun hinta on noin 10 euroa. Voit antaa lahjoituksesi myös suoraan pankkitilille, jonka numero näkyy ruudussa.